everyone. So my name is Cindy. I'm an astrologer. I've been um, working with astrology, um, learning astrology for more than seven years and practicing it. Um, soon I will be certified. I'm working on my certification. But in a few days from now, I shall be a certified life coach. So I am putting these two together. I've always seen um, the 12 constellations like a 12-step uh, self-help program. <laughs> and I would like to share with you how that is possible a lot of people don't know the even the meanings of constellations, and um, and so um, I want to just open your eyes to understanding the twelve systems of this of astrology, and when you are um, focusing on. Um, bettering your energies and how you're working with the with with these topics how it can help better your your health your life your mindset <laughs> and um and i'm sharing this with you because uh you can always work with me as a life coach if there's something that I mentioned while I'm going through the 12 constellations, then this is something that we can work together of um, uh, having your goals or understanding who you are, understanding your values and going really deep. Because as an astrologer, I'm able to look at your birth chart and see, okay, the things that happened in your childhood and the patterns that you have and the blockages that need to be dealt with and the people you need to forgive so that you no longer have the blockages to deal with and um, the mindsets, the self-sabotaging mindsets and all of that I can see when I'm looking at your birth chart, okay? But even though I'm intuitive and I'm able to see all of that, the, the trick was then to help my client to um, get out of their little hole, get out of their ruts, okay? And I wanted to go about it more in a, in a like, psychology, uh, being able to, to help you understand yourself and how to help you to be able to inner reflect and to start having a mm, habit of getting your own self out of your own rut <laughs> and teaching you how, like teaching people how to fish, okay? So that I'm, you're not uh, using me as a crutch in your life and you know, even though I would be available for you for an amount of time, but then I will let you, you know, <laughs> fly out into the world and <laughs> and soar into the sky. Okay, so so let's get into it. Okay, so the first house belongs to Aries, and Mars is the planet that is the Lord of Aries. Okay, this. Uh, constellation has to do with um, your self. It is has a very young energy that wants to push forward because it's the first house. It's new. It's brand new. It's a baby. It just it's like it's got so much energy. It just wants to go forward. You know, it's like this is full gas, and it has that energy of testosterone to make it happen. And for some people, I'm able to see whether their testosterone is very low or whether it's too much. This is the constellation where I can see, oh, people have some anger issues here. They need some anger management that I can see with their Mars, whether the Mars is just exploding <laughs> or whether it's um, being suppressed. Okay, so I'm able, I'm able to see that in a person and, and um, then I, as a life coach, I'm able to help you to um, 
making that more stronger so that you can be a go-getter in life and make things happen, okay? So then we have the second house and Taurus, it, this constellation is the Lord here. And it has a lot to do with your values, um, your family, uh, savings, assets, the quality uh, of foods that you eat and your speaking, your throat energy or family business and your self-esteem. So in this constellation, I'm able to see whether you have a lack of self-esteem, whether you have, you know, who is giving you um, like that stretching and like sometimes it's the mother or sometimes it's the father, the siblings that you may like, for instance, um, when the when the uh, cancer falls into there, then into your second house, then it may be either you feel very valued by your mother or if bad planets are in there, it's like, ah, oh, my family doesn't value me. My parents don't value me. I'm the black sheep of the family. And then you start to create all of these like patterns in life and having difficulty of finding a home over you're, you know, finding a house <laughs> or a roof over your head, for instance, I'm able to see all of that and, and to help you to deal with these core value issues, okay? Then the third house is Gemini. Uh, Gemini is all about communication. Um, it's about your courage. It has to do with media, like me, I'm a Gemini, that's why I'm on YouTube, I love to talk. Journalism, salesmanship, short distance traveling, your hobbies, your handcraft, working with your fingers and your hands, and it has to do with your younger siblings and your neighbors. Okay, so here I'm able to see if you are talking to people like a a pirate, whether you're lying a lot, whether you're like speaking viciously, especially with the North Node sitting in here, it tends to make a person um, express themselves communicatively very um, like a little demon, because <laughs> that's what the North Node represents. And I'm able to see certain things like whether you're having difficulty speaking with your with your younger siblings or neighbors and, you know, coming head to head, fighting with them or so, I'm able to see all of that. So as a life coach, I'm able to help you step by step of releasing, forgiving, letting things go, and then rebuilding that house, rebuilding yourself within, okay? Um, and for doors to open up, because this is also the energy of contracts as well as your hands. And I have noticed that some people who have a lot of karma in this house, they tend to get um, arthritis or, or really strange things happen to their arms or fingers and they get broken bones and stuff. And, and um, not knowing what's happening, it's like they, those usually happen, these incidents usually happen when there's a solar eclipse within their third house or in Gemini and then bad things happen. <laughs> like, I'm able to see that. Oh, okay. I see. It's like when you have a, an eclipse on a full moon, it's like, um, it's like you reaping what you've sown in that house, basically. Okay. So then let's go on to the fourth house that belongs to cancer. Okay. The fourth house has to do with your mother and, um, nourishment, um, your physical home, your homeland, teachings of the mother, um, your the, the divine mother. <laughs> and um, yes, it is the co conveniency of home and um, the mother's education, <laughs> feeling that you belong, that feeling nourished and loved and it's emotion, the house of emotions. And so when I'm looking at your astrology chart, I'm able to see whether the mother's not even 
there, whether there's a lack of her presence or whether there's just like fighting with her or I can see whether there's been abuse or um, whether you're suffering from CPTSD, complex post-traumatic syndrome, you know, I'm able to see this whether also the this house also has to do with your womb. I'm able to see whether you're ripe to being pregnant or whether you're having a hard time being pregnant, whether your mother even had an operation in her womb or or things like that. I'm able to see all of that. And um, cause some people, what I have what I have noticed is when the, the moon is the lord of this house, and if the moon is badly aspected or this house, um, I have seen time and time and time again that either they cannot have a baby or they don't get along with their children. And I can see the difference of not being able to have a baby or, um, yeah. So when, uh, what I have noticed is when the, the energy of um, forgiving the mother and letting go and releasing all the toxicity of uh, the past, not having to dwell on the past, you don't even have to talk about the past. It's just knowing the patterns, knowing that they're there, and then working with me to help you out, out uh, and helping you, teaching you how you can get out of out of this, you know, rut, which is keeping you from having a happy home and a happy family. Okay, so then we have the fifth house which Leo is the Lord of. And a son, the son is, is the Lord of this house, okay? Now, son has to do with your ego, with who you believe you are. But then, if you work with me, then we're going to really look into who you think you are because some people base it on on your on their career or their body <laughs> that they are only their their body and such as a movie star or a, a, a sportsman a football star or so and then once they come to the point where they're not young anymore and they just are not all shiny and sparkly and they they have a, a an identity crisis, then they are wondering, who am I if I'm not able to throw that football or touch that score, uh, make a touchdown <laughs> or or um, make a, be always called to the next hottest Hollywood movie. If I'm not able to go down that cat catwalk on, um, you know, the best of the best of those name brands, then they lose their identity. And so um, so I'm able to help a person understand who they are. And, you know, how are you? How are you? And uh, um, how are you being? How are you showing up into the world? And um, so to get down to who you are, to the core you. <laughs> okay, and so that's regarding the sun and Leo. Leo? has to do with your childhood, your your inner the inner child within you, your creativity, um, your artistry, what you're able to create and show to the world. Some people may have planets here and to be creative, but depending on, like say for instance, you have Venus here, it gives you the ability to to um, to create <laughs> and and beautiful things, but how successful you are in making that happen for you in life uh, depends on like if if you have love problems, lots of love problems. That that Venus, the more it starts to rot, the more you start to rot the energy by by. Um, abusing that Venus energy, it's like the cat only has nine lives and you, you know, and you keep throwing that cat down the building, like 
<laughs> and and you start to diminish the energy within the fifth house okay and then you're wondering like why am i always getting cheaters in my life or you know why am i having um a block in writing a song or i used to be good and well um that's where i come in i'm able to see your patterns in life and helping you clear them out and uh, helping you step by step to becoming your own hero. Because Leo also has to do with um, making, having your own, having your own, um, being your own boss and creating your own business. Okay. And um, so that is the energy of Leo. Um, yeah, your relationship with children. So if you had a hard time in your childhood and difficulties with other children or so, um, these are things that also have to be looked at um, because uh, um, when you have a child, you may also have like difficulties clashing with your own child or when they're teenagers or so. Okay, so this sixth house belongs to Virgo. And... Um, I have my moon here, so I have a lot of experience in regards to Virgo moons and understanding Virgo. Um, this is the house of health or the lack of health, okay? Um, it is the, your everyday life, your daily work, and um, our colleagues at work. It is um, your... Um, your loans yes if like you can get into debt in this house and yes i said your health um the lord of this house is mercury which has to do with uh um intelligence so that that fast speedy planet um it uh okay virgo now <laughs> I'm able to see here whether a person is um, lacking structure, lacking being able to uh, to be orderly or so, whether they have fears of animals or um, whether they are nitpicking everyone and and getting on each other's nerves, whether they have problems with their co-workers or health problems as well. And um, so uh, I'm able to work with people to, to, to see why they have certain mm, difficulties with their health, what has happened in their life or so that is making them not believe in themselves, okay? Now, um, I'm also able to see, when I was younger, I used to have a phobia because this is the house of cleanliness and being orderly. <laughs> and I used to have a phobia. And this is also the house of phobia, <laughs> having phobias. And I used to be scared of putting my hands or touching a trash can. And everyone knew this. They all thought it was very funny. I was very orderly, <laughs> very clean. And um, I have noticed that um, when a person's moon is not in balance, when your emotions and your relationship with the family are not in balance, you tend to be a little messy or you tend to kill plants <laughs> when you, and your moon has to do with your emotions so even when your heart is broken you tend to be a little messy not not being as orderly as you should and i have killed a few plants <laughs> and so um also whether there's been blockages of not being able to have pets in your life okay so uh that i'm able to see in the sixth house then we have the seventh house. And before anyone could ever be, now the seventh house belongs to Libra. And it has to do with relationships. And Venus is the lord of this, the planet of love and beauty, romance, relationships. 
And so that's what Libra is all about. And um, um, well, when Venus is also the Lord of the second house of Taurus, and when people have a lot of energy in Taurus, the second house, or Venus or the seventh house, they tend to have a lot of beauty. They tend to be beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so um, when, when you have a balance of the first six constellations, then you are able to balance out that relationship, okay? Because the first house has to do with me, me, me. That's Aries. It's me, me, me. It's all about me. It's all about my body. It's all about my muscles. When a person has so many energy or, or planets in their first house or in Mars, then their whole focus is on themselves or on their body. And they don't care. They don't really, you know, the, the, the person in their life that they love are mostly on the back burner because they are married to their body and their focus is on themselves, on their on their own life, okay? And um, being a boss and being that alpha man and it's all about them. And that's the first house when you're just learning all about you, okay? And that is necessary. It is necessary to love who you are and to love yourself. But then you have to learn the second house of valuing yourself. And then the third house, knowing how to communicate. The fourth house, understanding emotions and the dynamics of relationships. And then the fifth house, being one with your inner child, having a good childhood, being able to get along with children and having creativity. And it is also the fifth house and Leo has to do with dating as well, going through that road, the dating road, then the sixth house being nice and orderly because when you're orderly, then you are ready for the seventh house, which is being together with someone. And um, uh, where you're not, you're now, ripe or mature enough if you have if you have um really balanced out the first six houses then you're really ripe to coexist with other people or to be in a contract um, because this is also a house of contracts of working with people working for a boss or having clients as well and if you are not orderly or if you are not emotionally stable, if you don't value yourself and you don't, then you're going to be walked on and you're not going to be um, bringing people into your life who value you if you don't value yourself or if people are not going to have an easy time getting along with you if you're not emotionally stable. So the first six houses are very important for the seventh house to work, relationships, okay? Understanding like the seven pillars of making a relationship work and what they are, if you wanna know, then I'm gonna have that. I'm going to have videos in my Patreon very soon. <laughs> and, um, and so you can uh, learn with me or come in a coaching session with me, okay? so. Then we have the eighth house, which Scorpio is the uh, ruling constellation here. And Mars, again, is the ruler here, as well as Pluto. Because Mars is the bloody soldier, you know, with his sword killing people <laughs> or his machine gun bringing people through war into Hades. And so Pluto represents Hades. Uh, the Lord of the Underworld. So the eighth house represents that underworld energy. And, it, and there's a lot of mythology in the eighth house that has to do with the, with the flat eight of um, dying and resurrecting and, and um, reincarnation and uh, Persephone, which is the queen of the underworld, there's a, a story here. So she represents the flat eight energy and 
that same energy in regards to ayahuasca. I made a, I made a video, is Persephone, does she represent Mother Ayahuasca? Because their energy seem very similar here. Okay, so um, now uh, the eighth house has to do with marriage and how well you get along in regards to shared finances in sharing things, <laughs> okay? It, it even means like business partners and, and your shared finances with business partners as well. But this is, can even be like if you're, if you have a roommate and you're living together and sharing finances. But this is also other people's money, such as um, the gov government money or um, um, <laughs> uh, inheritances. I just had like a, <laughs> a block. Inheritances and um, alimony, things of that sort. So this is other people's money, bank loans as well. Now, um, when this energy is off, I'm able to see whether you have problems with your, with your mate, with your, with whoever you're living with or with whomever you're married with or why you're not getting married, um, or whether they're cheaters. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm able to see all of that, um. I have also seen <laughs> um, me in my dress. Okay, I've I have seen I can see lots of stuff and lots of patterns um, here. Uh, so, so my my job as a life coach would be just to help you see the patterns and also forgiving certain people because it it has a it's the house of sex i'm able to see whether you hate it or whether you love it or whether you're into those threesomes or not i'm able to see all of that and um and so my when i do read um and i'm sharing to you what you already know basically but we are able to look at it deeper and see uh, how, how things from your childhood have progressed into self-sabotaging your, your, um, your present day, okay? Or, your, or what, whether it, we can stop it from um, self-sabotaging, that you self-sabotage your future when we are working on releasing, letting go, clearing things out, and and um, getting to the deep and to the heart of it and how to, to look, and what things, what actions to take in order to um, change your mindset. And I can help coach you to... Um, just breaking bad habits, okay, by creating new habits. So on to the ninth house. Sagittarius is the Lord here. That's a fire house. And um, Jupiter is the Lord of this house. Jupiter is known as the teacher, the guru. It likes to bless. It's a benefactor of all, wherever it goes to, wants to bless and expand that energy, okay? So Sagittarius is also in regards to your um, higher education, and let's see what it says here. Um, your, your pilgrimage, <laughs> your your philosophies, what you believe in, your belief system, what what your father has taught you. It's your father's beliefs imposed upon you or, or um, the society around you imposing beliefs and politics into your mindset. And um, so, yeah, philosophical learnings and teachings of the father figure, um, this is also um, uh, da, 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 da. 
Yeah. I... So it's the key of fortune. It's also the house of fortune. But it uh, has to do with people such as professors and teachers and lawmakers. Yeah, it's the, the, the constellation of law, as well as the, the sixth house is the house of litigation, of arguing. <laughs> okay, so, but the ninth house has to do with, um, like, university level education or getting certified. <laughs> and at the moment, the North Node um, from my um, from my moon from from Virgo, <laughs> uh, Taurus is in my ninth house, from, and um, the North Node is now sitting there, and here I am, <laughs> like crazy, trying to be certified and educating myself, and like a maniac, <laughs> it's like seeing and doing and being a doer and shaker in education, and so. Um, that's that energy. Uh, I am able to see whether there's a lack of wanting to learn, hating the education, or um, having problems with uh, people. Now, another thing that I have seen is when you have conflicts with the law or or your father's philosophies and and I can see, you know, conflict there or whether you get along with your father or not or whether you hate politics or all of that. I'm able to see. And when there's a lot of anger and frustration here, it makes it difficult for you to have an open heart to educating yourself or having higher education because you may be um, so blocked in this house that you are creating a sabotaging mindset of of wanting to even educate yourself there's that lack of motivation and so i can help you like clear out you know the garbage in this house so because that could be a, um some reasons why um, you're not able to achieve your goals because in a lot of our goals that we have, we need education to get there. And we don't have to sit in a room and have it done. But, you know, uh, with me as your life coach, I'm able to help you step by step on finding a plan and holding you accountable <laughs> and, you know, things like that. The 10th house. The 10th house has to do with um, constellation Capricorn that has to do with authoritative figures, government officials, your father, your boss. Um, yes, and your fame out in the world. It is your reputation, how you, you how people are looking at you. And it represents your bones and your teeth and your and your skin, the collagen, okay? So when you have a lot of karma in this house, what I have noticed from Capricorn people, Capricorn people, because I just happen to notice this because in Jan, because, yeah, I know someone who's Capricorn. And every time Capricorn comes around, it's like, um, Everything that can go wrong can go wrong for them because they've created so much karma <laughs> between their, their relationship with their father and with government officials and bosses. It's like there's just so much anger there that whenever, whenever that sun came into Capricorn or, or, um, or the, the, like the person's father is Aquarius and whenever that son is in Capricorn and Aquarius it's like everything that can go wrong for them goes wrong like like three years in a row I saw always around that time so I thought that is pretty interesting and, and these are patterns that astrologers pick up on that we see when we know people it's like our our especially because my moon is in Virgo I am very I, I'm always like looking and almost like a calculator, like oh that that that, that 
one plus one means two that and um so I notice these these patterns in people when they're repetitious, uh, um, that if you're creating a lot of karma in this house, then that's probably why things are going wrong all the time for you during these times. Um, and especially now, because a lot of people are getting very angry at the government and um, things happen and in life, in the world, in society, as long as you are not, you know, letting your anger <laughs> um, just sabotage your energies with other authoritative figures, because that's what I noticed during this time. This time has been a big eye opener because um, what I noticed is that for people who are very angry at the government, that they are not only angry at the government, but they are showing their anger at all people across the board that are authoritative figures in any shape, way, or form. And I think that is not fair, especially to teachers or um, directors of schools or things. I noticed that. <laughs> Because I'm a teacher and I'm, I'm slowly leaving my work to just work on, I'm saying goodbye. This is my last year as a teacher in schools. Um, yeah, because, <laughs> but I don't let it get, I don't get angry about it. You know, it's just like, um, okay, I see what's happening. I don't want to be, I don't want to be vaccinated. I believe in herbs and healing my body with herbs. And so I, um, if I am not allowed to go out there and work, then I'm going to be working online. And uh, so that's why I'm starting my life coaching course and being certified and everything because I want to be working only online. If I have to be in my home, then I don't care because I'm a Pisces. I love being alone. I love meditating. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what's going on is, okay, things are happening, but you don't have to like get so angry because... Um, no reason to explode and create lots of drama because you're what you're putting out into the world you're getting back okay so that's what i just want to share in in regards to um this and and we can life i can life coach you in regards to your relationship with your father and that's another thing that i notice is um people who already had like um a lot of unbalanced energy with their father and authoritative figures are the ones who react even more in regards to, you know, getting angry and getting triggered by all that's happening. Okay, so uh, on we go to Aquarius, the 11th house. This has to do with your uh, friend circle, your networks, networking whether it be online such networking on platforms um uh also it is the house of your hopes dreams and wishes the house of money and um it what else um your goal setting um your older siblings um your professional network and your wealth as i said it has to do with money now, two planets are the Lord's here, and that is Saturn and Uranus. Uranus is that planet that is um, rotating differently than everyone. It wants to be unique. <laughs> this is your eccentric ego, your ego eccentricities here, if you have a lot of energy in Aquarius. And um, I have to always change my leg because my blood is stopping <laughs> okay so um so it's wanting uranus has that energy of wanting to be different wanting to be a rebel and now uh well i'm not going to talk about astrology and what all that imposes but i'm able to see you know uh sometimes people feel like they don't belong they feel they stick out and Uranus is all about being unique. And um, so 
I'm able to see when pers a person has too a lot of Uranus energy that they um, they like to be unique with their, you know, especially if this energy is in the first house of the body. Lot people like to have lots of tattoos and earring piercings and stuff. I'm able to see that artistry. <laughs> it's like Venus and Aquarius in the first house <laughs> and the North Node there too. So um, I'm able to see that. Uh, um, this is also the energy of being in inventive and uh, connecting, connecting to uh, like understanding the universe. Also having a heart, excuse me, having a heart to um, um, helping other people. It's like your humanitarian side comes out in, in this house and as well as your wealth and being able to um, manifest your dreams, your hopes, dreams, wishes. And here, um, when I see, when I see like there's a lot of problems with your older siblings and there may be like blockages um, also to, to, um, and I have seen this so much. I have seen this so much that uh, people who have problems with their older siblings tend to always fight with their friends too and they're like hopping from one friend to another because they can't really really stay friends with people for a very long time and and so the one thing that i share with my daughters is your your siblings are are the like test ground of how you're going to be getting along with other people Okay, and friends, and and so, and so um, I'm always telling them about this, but I, because I see this Gemini having to do with younger siblings, and your colleagues as well, some and friends, and the eleventh house also has to do with your friends and and um, and your network circle, and if you're not getting along with your siblings, then you're going to have a hard time having a deep connection with friends. It'll it'll either be you know. Like, yeah, they come, they go, you're not holding them very long and um, or you're always arguing or if you're if you always were fist fighting with your friends then even your friends, uh, the, the energy there may even be physical as well, where you're like scratching or or cheating each other or lying to each other or talking mean to each other. That's the energy I can see. And so I'm able to see that and help you work out on releasing things in regards to your blockages with your older siblings so that you're able to have better relationships with friends. And then you're able to manifest better your hopes, dreams, and wishes. Okay. Then your 12th house belongs to Pisces. Okay. So. Uh, here in Austria, I tend to be a Pisces ascendant. <laughs> so uh, it has to do with spirituality, connection to divine and the other side, the other other dimensions or behind the curtain. You know, it's like the the it's like the, the energy for mediums or being able to see ghosts or, you know, people thinking that you're crazy <laughs> because um that's that energy. A person who has like dark, like mm, not so good planets in here tend to like to do a lot of drugs, especially if the North Node is sitting here because you're not wanting to be grounded. You're not wanting to be on Earth. You're always in La La Land. Here I'm able to see whether a person has a very good fantasy and if you have Mercury sitting here, then you have a big fantasy and the ability to write books or songs. And um, so uh, that is this energy. It's also the house of secrets, secrets behind closed doors. Um, what else do they say? It, oh, yes. Asylum and jails and hospitals. So if you have bad planets here, I'm able to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, you were in jail <laughs> or be careful. Um, no, um, 
let's not go, go down that road. <laughs> um, so um, I'm Pisceans love to be alone. But if you have, um, I'm able to see whether you're self-sabotaging because the, the 12th house is all about, okay, Aries is the go-getter, wanting to push forward, wanting to push forward. But Aries is more about, okay, um, been there, done that. I just want to sit home. I just, and, and that's that energy of not going forward. It's just like, coming, bringing it to an end, wrapping it up. And so, so that energy of Piscean, if you, have, especially if you have moon here, you can be self-sabotaging your thoughts in your thoughts because moon has to do with your thoughts and you're not pushing your thoughts forward to make and to create and make it happen. Okay. So, um, for people who have moon in here, sometimes their mother is very spiritual or so, or the mother is just not like grounded or they, they don't connect with their mother <laughs> very much. Um, I'm able to see that and ask them, okay, um, how is your relationship with your mother? You know, especially if I see son sitting here, I'm able to see, oh, either the father was not present in your life or, you know, there's just like the, the dynamic between you and your father. How is your the dynamic between you and your father? You know, I'm able to ask these questions because when the dynamic, a person who has son here, um, um, if you if if you have, um, there are some people who do not um, have a good relationship with their father, or they never even got to see their father, depending on how. That son is aspected. You know, sometimes they see their father, sometimes they don't. And and um, um, it depends. It really depends on whether Jupiter is sitting here or whether, you know, uh, uh, your, your, your relationship with your father is being blessed, okay? Um, but I'm able to see that and then um, to help you in regards to healing your relationship in your heart with uh, your father um, because the doors then open up uh, um, in this house in regards to feeling, um, um, not feeling fear because this is also the house of fear, also the house, it's also a sexual house and um, house of hidden treasures, but also the house of enemies, okay, hidden enemies. So, um, yeah, that's uh, um, trying to clear out that uh, looking deep into this. It's the house of, like, energy of self-sabotaging. Neptune and Jupiter are the lords of this house, by the way. So I'm able to see um, whether... Um, whether you're always in la la land and not making things happen for yourself. And so I just wanted to share this because astrology has a lot of facets in regards to how you're living out your life. And no one has to be a victim of their astrology chart. And it's all a matter of learning who you are and understanding and working and making your karma into dharma and making tools out of what you've gone through because a lot of us have gone through a lot of things in 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 their lives and it's all about taking that you know like say for instance you have a crushed grape and you feel like a crushed grape well let's let's create that grape into wine you know let's let's make something out of it and um so <laughs> so that's what i want to share with you guys i know this has been a long video and yeah so hugs and kisses thanks for sh for taking the time to come to this point and um yeah, if you want an astrology a Zoom meet with me, then I 
have a link up here or up here somewhere um, where uh, you can um, connect with me and yeah, have some live coaching, astrology, have your astrology chart read. And then we can talk about, you know, um, through the astrology chart reading, what you would work, want to work on the most in your life. And we, and I can life coach you on that. Okay. Bye-bye.